Good morning again. We are going to carry on no matter what because we are in the driveway. And we shouldn't always expect things to go smoothly. But get right back in there and do what we need to do. Amen. So in the driveway this morning, we are talking about waiting. The stages of waiting. Good morning again. Please forgive me, but I had to switch to my phone. But there's no music because my other phone is missing in action. So nevertheless, we're going to carry on with waiting. The stages of waiting because this is very, very, very important. So please, if you would, just share it with uh, your, your friends, your followers, somebody that this can really bless. Because I'm telling you, it was eye-opening. It was awakening um, to... Um, for God to just let let this unfold in my spirit. Uh, waiting. You know, we hear about wait on the Lord. I'm sorry. I have a child that's screaming outside the door. Jekai, can you please go back in? Thank you. That's my four-year-old. But anyways, um, so waiting on the Lord. We hear about wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. They that wait on the Lord, he, um, they shall renew their strength. The waiting on the Lord is absolutely amazing in its place and in its timing. Um, wait on the Lord, as we already covered before, does not mean I'm going to wait to do what he already told me to do because I don't really know and I'm uncomfortable and I'm sure and I don't feel like it. Not that kind of waiting. Good morning. Good morning, darling. I love you all. But waiting on the Lord when it's something, as I was saying, it, it's something that you, you you know you're supposed to do. Is something or that you really believe that you're supposed to have and a promise you've been given a prophecy you've been that's been spoken over you and you know that you know that you know good morning good morning that this is something that is for you gonna happen to you gonna happen for you um and then there is the process in between the beginning and the actual getting whatever it is that you uh, have been promised or know that you were created to do nevertheless waiting so in the beginning of waiting you know you got to wrestle with your you, we, we, we wrestle but okay i'm gonna say me i wrestle with my flesh i know i'm supposed to have this i know i'm supposed to do this but i gotta wait so i gotta train myself on waiting and the first stages of waiting is um, anxiety you know doubt comes in fear comes in every negative thought Good morning. I love you. I love you so much. Thank you for all of your love and support, Cousin Lucille. You were one of my mom's favorite and also one of mine. Um, but training the body, training the mind to wait on the Lord. And when you're in that stage, you're not really feeling it. But you're just trying to obey the Lord and walk out his will for your life. Walk out the word of God, which is wait. He tells us to wait. That better things are coming when we wait. So when we get to that place and we're like, I, you know, and it's okay to even say, you know, I don't really want to wait. But because I love you, God, I don't really want to wait. But because I'm ready to step into everything that you have for me. God, I really don't want to wait because I'm going I'm to take it here now. Sister Sally Sue and Sister Rebecca, they already had theirs and they didn't even have to wait. See, the problem right there is you don't know what they had to do. You don't know if God had anything to do with it. You don't know if they got it on their own will. You don't know their story. So it's best as God, I mentioned the other day, the three spirit, the three C spirits of complaining, comparing, and I don't even remember the last one, complaining, comparing, and, um, but nevertheless, those are two, the two I'm talking about right now. Comparing. You can't compare. You can't compare. So in the meantime, I'm telling myself, remind you, you're going to wait. We're going to wait. You're going to wait on the Lord. He has a plan. You may not know. You may not feel it. You may not hear anything, but God has a plan. So when you master that stage, which I'll call stage one of waiting, you get into a place where you realize, you know what? It's not so bad to wait. It's not so bad to wait. And that's what I call stage two. It's like, once again, a little bit of the scales being lifted off your eyes and you realize, good morning, I love you. And you realize that, you know what? This thing is true. God really has something amazing in store for me. And it doesn't matter what I've gone through. It doesn't matter what I've done. But because today I choose to be in alignment with the word of God. And today I choose to wait on the Lord. And in the meantime, I'm going to be of good cheer. 
I can wait this thing out because I know something is coming on the other side. Stage two, with just a total awareness that those things that you wrestled with in stage one have brought you to stage two where you can just be comfortable in waiting. And you're like, okay, it's not so bad to wait. You know, in the beginning, we sung the song, I don't mind waiting. And it's not lying like uh, William Murphy said, you prophesying. Because you be, I don't mind waiting, but in the back of your mind, Lord, I think it's time. So understand that, and this is another thing that can trip us up and get us off post, is when we're thinking that our thinking is wrong. Your thinking is right because you're coming from how many years of doubt? How many years of back and forth? How many years of not believing in yourself? How many years of uh, God is not going to do this for me because I messed up too bad? You see, uh huh. God has favorites and you know he's going to do it for them, but I don't deserve it. Well, guess what? The blood of Jesus makes us all deserve it because they don't deserve it either because they got issues they got problems you know what i'm saying and one thing about it we can dress up anything now that right there we can dress up anything and you know it's so amazing i went from having to be dressed up all the time made up all the time whatever god took me to a place where i ain't had hardly nothing to wear i couldn't fit my clothes none of that stuff so i had to be comfortable uh in the skin i was in and going to church focusing on jesus not how good i look okay and you get in that place where you just get comfortable in the skin you're in. Now, it doesn't mean that you get complacent, but you're just comfortable with where I am. And see, that's the, that's the process of waiting. Waiting will press out. Waiting will pull out the real you. It will cause you to, you know what? I don't, okay, I need this still. I need to do this still. God is working on this. But I'm okay right now where I'm at because I can see where he brought me from. Now, catch that in the spirit. And you're being able to be comfortable. You don't have to dress up your mess. Now, catch that in the spirit. Uh, you know, it, it, it's time out for dressing up the mess, you know, or going before the Lord and getting the vehicle, going before the Lord, marrying somebody that's not the one God has for you, going before the Lord, getting in debt is something that you cannot pay for. And then you say it's the Lord. But then when things fall through, what happened? You can't say it's the Lord because when he brings it out of no sorrow, come on now. But the waiting is the key to getting it the Lord's way. Not saying that they won't be difficult days. I can't say that enough. But at the end of the day, you know that you know that the Lord has you and that this thing is going to work out because he has a plan that I don't understand. He has a plan that you don't understand. Go back to the point of waiting, waiting on the Lord. And then when you get ready, you'll walk around. I love it when I just walk around and look around and you're like, you know what, Lord, I'm good right here. I'm good where I'm at because I was always in a place that I want this. I need to do this and could never celebrate where you're at. I could never celebrate where I was and look back and see where the Lord has brought us from. You know what just flashed in my mind? And I've never been to the dog track, but the, 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 the Greyhound, the track. You know, the, the, the dogs, from what I understand and what I've researched, the dogs have something that they're blinded to what's going on around them. And they just have this thing in focus and they're always chasing it. Well, guess what? They never catch this thing that they're chasing after. So every race, they're chasing these things again, never to catch them. But see, we have been made in the image of God. So if we can sometimes, and I know I've said it too, don't look back, don't look back. It's okay to look back if you're thanking God from where he brought you from. It's okay to look back to remind yourself, hey, okay, I know I'm not where I want. I know I don't have that thing that I was promised yet, but I can remember when I didn't have this. I'm going to take it here. I can remember when I didn't know how to pay my bills in the house I was in. I can remember when things were just awful and I didn't, you know, I was just holding on by by my nails you know just holding on uh all you can see like that picture that meme that goes around all you can see is my knuckles around just holding on but now i'm in a place where it's not it's not hard anymore am i in the home that i want to be in no nah. you know Am I in the vehicle that I want to be? No, but I'm waiting upon the Lord because what I won't see. And when you wait, you find out who you really are. When you wait, you find out what you qualify for. My God, my God. You, when you wait, you realize that you are a king or you are a queen and the Lord has something amazing. But how many know when we want it, want it, want it right now, we're more apt to settle for less than what God has for us, which is our best. And that's in relationships, 
things, jobs, careers, whatever the case may be. If you can wait on the Lord and allow him, because see why you're, you're not just waiting to, to, for the Lord to hand it to you. While you're waiting, he's working on you. He's preparing you for that thing that you're waiting on. While you're waiting, he's dealing with patience. Hello. Hello. While you're waiting, he's dealing with character. For those of you who are waiting on things and, and money or whatever, while you're waiting, he's training you to be able to handle the little money you have before he can release the big money. Come on now. While you're waiting, he's transforming you. So when you take your mind off of what you're waiting on and put your mind on the fact that God is working on me and I can see a change in myself. I can see a change in my life. I can see a change in my surroundings, even though my surroundings haven't changed. Now, you got to catch that one. Sometimes I'm so comfortable. I'm so in my in my zone that it doesn't matter when he releases I just know he's going to release it. Doesn't mean I don't want more in life, but I give myself permission to be content in the state that I'm in. And you got to give yourself permission because as humans, we don't want to be there. We want to be somewhere else and chasing, chasing, just like the groundhog, the groundhog, the greyhound. But I'm telling you, you, when you get to that place where you're like, okay, God, and don't get me wrong, thoughts to come up and like, mm. You know what, God, in your timing, it's going to happen. And then you can step into the spirit of joy because I'm not worried about it. I'm not doubting that it's not, uh, not going to happen. I'm not in fear of it happening. And I'm going to throw this, this J word in here. I'm not jealous because it happened for somebody else. Stop right there. I'm not jealous because it happened for Ricardo before it happened to me. I'm not jealous because it happened to Cousin Lucille be before it happened to me. As a matter of a fact, because God been working on me in this waiting season, I'm going to celebrate Cousin Lucille. I'm going to celebrate Ricardo because I'm happy about what God is doing for them. And I'm going to tell you something. You can fake it. You can try. You can pretend. If you don't let God get in there and do some rearranging in that heart, you cannot be happy because the spirit of jealousy will be like a rain cloud following you around. Have you ever seen it in the cartoons or in a movie? Wherever, I mean, a person just going through so much and everywhere they go, the little cloud. I know because I used to be there. Because see, when you're jealous, that means that you don't think that God can do it for you or that you're not in a place where you realize that may not be the exact thing that God has for you, but you can celebrate. I can celebrate, um, you, I can celebrate. I can be excited about what God is doing for you because guess what? My time is coming. Guess what? Your time is coming. If you just wait and allow God to bring you through those stages of waiting, and then you get to the place where you're so excited about what God is going to do. And then you look back and say, God, I'm so glad you didn't give it to me because I wasn't ready. God, I wasn't ready for it. I wouldn't have been able to maintain it. I wouldn't have been able to, to be in my right frame of mind to take care of what you've given me. Oh, God, I put my whole heart in what you've created me to do. So the waiting process, although it is hard to train our body, our humanness, okay, to be okay with waiting. But when we do, if you and I and it's not in the Bible about the one step, but the concept is so right. If you continue to practice this thing, you know, every time the thought, every time I go down somebody's timeline and they got something, God, okay, God, I don't want to be jealous. I, I like them, I love it, God bless them. And as you practice it, it really gets into your spirit that you know what? What God has for me is for me. What God has for you is for you. Nobody can take it, nobody can stop it, nobody can block it except you except me so being in that the stages of waiting that unfortunately may stretch out over some time but you got to understand and keep your eyes on the prize see there is some validity in what they do with the greyhounds because uh when you really focus and find out who you are what you're supposed to be doing and the role that god has you on that you then you get your blinders on and you don't look out, except when you need to remind yourself. Because see, the enemy is going to come. He's going to tell you, yeah, God, God promised you this. And look, you, it hasn't happened yet. 
It has to happen. Look, that you know, um, he plays on, like I said, comparing and complaining. Mm-hmm. You messed up too bad. Nah, it's not going to happen for you. Everybody, and then people go to talking in your ears. That's why you got to guard your ears. Yeah, I thought you said you was going to do this. I thought you said God was going to do that. But then when you, you can just look back a little bit and boom. Just look back last year real quick. Somebody think about last year where you were. Think about your mindset last year. Think about your finances six months ago, two months ago. Think about where God has brought you from and that'll sustain you so you can go into the next stage of waiting. And I'm telling you, when you wait on the Lord, this is one of my favorite. Um, I really, because all I saw was my parents married my whole life. So I just really wanted to be married. I got married. The marriage didn't work out. And I just felt like a failure. Um, I just felt like, oh, my God, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be married. I'm never, you know, because you know, remember at nine years old, the enemy told me I never would. So here I am just wanting to be married, wanting to be married, wanting to be married, wanting to be married. And then one day I was sitting on my porch <laughs> on Bob Little Road in Panama City, Florida, sitting on the porch. Yeah, I was smoking back then. And my neighbor and her boyfriend was over there getting down, throwing blows. When I tell you I had me a Holy Ghost party before I was even all the way right with God, I went in the house and I sincerely thank God for not being in a relationship. And from that day to this one, I realized that there was so much trauma in relationships. Now, this going to help somebody. It may seem like I'm off, but I'm not. It, may, it was so much trauma attached to relationships, so much drama attached to relationships, cheating, so much cheating involved, and not even always on that other person. I'm not going to even, you know, I own mine because you can't heal or grow if you don't own it. But there was so much that my mind was so warped about what a real relationship and a real marriage is. So even today, yes, I want to be married. I'm still not ready, and I'm okay with that because when God sends the man that he's been preparing for me, I need to be in the place and God prepare me for him because, ladies, if you want a king, you can't be ratchet. How you going to, he going to be the king, and you going to be ratchet Annie, ratchet Sally. If you want a king, you got to learn how to be a queen. Now, some of the married folks give me some hearts now because y'all know I'm telling the truth, you know? And in that waiting. And it gets to me every now and then. But I said, who knew, honey? And I sat down with my kids. And this was the most brutally honest I could be. You know? And it saddened me and freed me all in one, if you can understand that. I sat down to them and I told them I never wanted them to go through the things that I went through as far as relationships. But I made a promise that although I do not want to be by myself for the rest of my life. Because they're going to be grown and gone one day. But if, it, if it's not the one that God has for me, if it's going to be the stuff that I've went through already, if it's not going to be a relationship that can grow in Christ and we grow and love each other and we be friends when we're not so much in love, then I will have to be by myself because I don't want, to, I don't, I don't want it because God promised me so much more. And if it's not his will for my, me to be married, then I will have to be okay with that. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not pretending like I'm a super saint because at the end of the day, like I said, when I'm ready, when all of the scars, and that's the thing about scar tissue. Thank you, Lord. Scar tissue, even in the natural, there is scar tissue and um, you are healed and you look really good on the outside. The little scar went away. But how many know down in there where they did that surgery or where that, that, um, that tumor grew or something grew, um, there's scar tissue. Because they have to work to get it out. Catch that. Catch that. Well, guess what? There is scar tissue because we allow God to get the first layer, but we don't give him access to the second. Now, I'm telling you the truth. So then that's, you have to go back in again. So then you have scar tissue. And you got to let God in the spirit. The beautiful thing is the scar tissue can be healed. And you allow God to, to, to heal that scar tissue so he can get to your heart for real and get down to the root of the matter where you can't have good relationships. The root of the matter where you don't believe that you're beautiful. The root of the matter where you don't believe that you're the one that God called. Root of the matter when you don't believe that you're just good enough or you're that you deserve the mercy and the grace of God. So I tell you, waiting is a process that you can't get around if you're going to be everything that God has for you to be. But the most beautiful thing about it, if you can endure the waiting process, 
it's beautiful all by itself. You'll get to the point where even though you know what's at the end, you're so good. You're so okay with just being restored in God. You're so okay with just finding out who you are. You're so okay with realizing that God is your father, that he loves you, and that he forgives you. He don't hold it against you. He's teaching you how to love. He's teaching you how to be patient in that waiting process. He's teaching you how to live each day regardless of what you have or don't have. Now, somebody ought to be celebrating right now. The the waiting process is absolutely amazing once you make up your mind that you're going to endure it no matter what and then you go through the process and it's one of the most beautiful things you can experience because in the waiting process there is peace in the waiting process you find joy in the waiting process you realize for real that all things even your bad decisions even your dumb decisions, I say my dumb decisions, maybe yours weren't dumb. Even my dumb decisions, God has worked them for my good. They taught me endurance. They taught me to get back up and try again. They taught me to repent, apologize, get back up. You got to keep getting up. It's not, the problem ain't falling. The problem is, are you going to get up or are you going to wallow in it? So the waiting process is absolutely beautiful. Endure it embrace it and remember on the other side is that thing that God promised you on the other side is the the word that was spoken over you on the other side are those things that you waited for because how many know when you settle you missing God you jumping ahead of God but when you wait it'll be better than you can ever imagine more than you can ever ask or think eyes have not seen ears have not heard what God will and can do in you for you and through you if you wait on him I love you all I'm so grateful that you come back week after week I don't have I guess I had to sing the song right now because I had to switch phones but I want you to know that even in doing well the enemy tries to stop you but one thing I have learned to do I used to be the meltdown queen I gotta drop this with you uh, on you I, I, I used to be the meltdown queen when it didn't go like I just knew and I prepared and I planned it to go I was the meltdown queen and then I had to go through that waiting process and that learning of being a boxer in the spirit. You literally have to bob and weave. You literally have to duck. You literally have to know when to move forward. I mean, because God is making you pliable. He can use you. I don't know who needed to hear that. If you're not pliable. So in the meantime, you got to have almost like a backup plan or even don't say that because sometimes that's still trying to control things. But you just have to know that no matter what happens, you know what, God, <laughs> I'm looking for you. OK, well, now what is the next step? God, I know you wanted me to do this, but the way that I thought it was going to happen didn't. So show me how you want me to get it done. Get back in there and you do it. And that's what happens this morning. I love you. I thank God for each and every one of you. I am so excited about what he's doing because the growth process is absolutely amazing. But to have somebody to open up about the growth process and about the pitfalls and about, you know, the what not to do's and all of that, we don't really get a lot of that. We get people who are here and then they're there and they never show you how they got in between. I'm so grateful and I love my apostles in Panama City, but Apostle Katrina Garrett, change my life. And I know they say that all the time about people, but they're literally, their words change my life. When it can click on the God thinking, it changes your life. Amen. But she told me when I had to go on that walker and I said, I don't want to go out of the house. I ain't going to let nobody see me. I don't want to do this because I already said I'm healed and I had to get back on that walker. And she told me, Ramonda, you can't do that. You got to let them see you go through it because it's one thing to, to say, oh, I was here and now I'm there. Or I was there and now I'm here. But to allow the people of God to see you go through and you still have your joy. You still have your faith. You're still doing everything that you can for God. That's what impact lives and I'll never forget it. So my transparency was not my first choice, but it is the only choice because God's people need to see how we go through things and we can still have joy and we can still have strength and we can still have courage and power. But it doesn't mean we don't have bad days. But if you keep on getting back up, see that thing came back, getting back up and trying again and getting back up and refusing to quit, you will see your life change. You will see things get better before they actually get better. My God. 
I love you all. Again, I know I keep saying it because it is. Like I said, I didn't love me, so I ain't know how to love anybody else. But I genuinely love you, and I wish the best for you, and I pray for you. And if there's anything you need me to pray for that, you know, I don't speak. I don't tell anybody's business. I don't have a clique or a crew. God separated me, and I thought it was punishment, but it was for my assignment. Because if I tell you something, you'd know I hadn't heard it from nobody. I don't know anything about your business. I don't really go on Facebook to just look, look, look. I post or look when God says, but I keep it moving so that I can do my job effectively and it's not anybody speaking into my ear. It's not what I think. It's just totally relying on God. Father, I thank you for your people on this morning. Lord, I thank you for the person whose life has been changed because of what you shared this morning. Father, I thank you that the person that decided last night that they were going to give up today or tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. God, they can come across this video and be revived in the name of Jesus and understand that the waiting process is not a punishment, but a preparation, a preparation, God. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your infinite wisdom. I thank you that you're blessing your people, that you're healing your people, God, that you're setting them free and that more of your women of God and men of God will become transparent so people can really see what God can do and not just after the fact. God, we thank you for an amazing week filled with testimonies and, and praise reports, God, that we will hold on to our joy. And when it slips, God, we'll reach up and grab it again. Oh, God, that we refuse to believe the report of the doctor, that we refuse to repeat to believe the report of the enemy. And we shall believe your report in Jesus name. I pray. I thank you, Lord God. Amen. I'm going to have to sing it because I don't have my phone. In the driveway. Hey, come on. In the driveway. Where we at? Where we at? In the driveway. For your encouraging word with Ramonda Moore. Brown. Brown. Life is fun. Brown.